All right, you wrong uns. The tra training wheels are off on this one. We're taking the stabilizers off. So if you haven't uh, followed the, uh, done tutorial number two in the scavenger series and you're very new to grease pencil, I would suggest you check out uh, that tutorial. Otherwise, you might struggle to follow on, especially if you're new. Well, you will struggle if you're very new to grease pencil unless you're a propeller head. Right. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to um, ink this character and block in the colours. And uh, we might, I'm not sure yet, we'll see how we get on, we might do a bit of fine tuning of animation on it. I'm not sure yet, we'll see how we get on. Right, so sharpen up your grease pencils and let's jump straight in. So what I'm going to do on this character here, so I'm basically going to ink him. I'm only going to do one frame and then we're going to skip ahead. So as you might be aware, my go-to brush for inking is um, this curved brush here. Now I was thinking of inking him just uh, with just drawing with pencil, but I seem to be getting nicer and crisper. Well, not seem to be. My hands are a little bit drunken sailor hands. Um, I seem to be my hand my my hands seem to be not as fine tuned for for inking. A bit shaky, so I seem to be getting better the curves with this tool here than actually trying to do the ink by hand. I might do some of the some of the bits by hand, but majority I'm going to ink with this curve tool. You, if you, if you've been following my channel, you'd be familiar that. That's the tool I use for this one. Let's create a. Uh, I want the ink. I want to create actually. I want to create a ink object. Yeah, let's create an ink ink object. So uh, let's. I just. I've, I've been thinking that the ink, the ink itself layer. In production, I'm talking about professional. What? Right, let me try and explain something here. What I'm trying to do here is not deal with grease pencil as kind of a, like a hobby amateur type um, endeavor. I'm trying to treat grease pencil as we're going to be using it for production ready stuff. Because as I said to you before, I do intend to make a this scavenger series into a fully fledged uh, animated mini series. However, that, that, that won't start till um, next year. So I've got a lot of learning to do before I, I embark on such an ambitious project. So what I wanna do is I wanna treat this as a, as a serious topic. Um, so everything I do, it's gotta be looking at production level What's the word to use? Production level. Um, workflows. So that if, if, if I'm fortunate enough to have a team or if other people are trying to learn from it and they have a team or they're working on it even solo by themselves, they can uh, use some of the, the stuff that I've I put out there, probably possibly um, make better and but put it to there for their, their own productions. So something else I was thinking about when, when I was, I've, I've done this, I've already inked it before, and this is not the first, this is my, my first rodeo. I, I actually inked it before, and I weren't happy with the results, because what I did before when I inked it, I did ink it by hand, and then when I played the animation, Obviously, you got you got you get line consistency problems. I should have I, I basically I deleted it. I should have kept it to show you to show you my the error of my ways. Uh, but I was so disgusted with it um, that I deleted it. Um, so I think the way forward um, is you want to keep that ink in line consistency. Um, so. I, it's, Ideally, it would be great if I could just quickly draw it. But um, to keep that line consistency, I think we're going to have to 
use we're gonna have to use the inks to do it so what I'm thinking is the way forward is to use obviously use your ink and use thickness don't mess about with the profile settings just keep it as it is because it still gives you a pretty cur uh, a cool line and then we just stick with that and then um, this should hopefully give us the the thickness we want and then also what we have to do as well especially if we're doing um, this for production stuff is we stick with a, a particular radius of our on our ink so let's um, also let's just add a new layer on this ink let's call that ink All that ink. Um, I'm not sure why we have to do t two here. I'm not sure. If someone knows why we have to do two, I think this might just be a header for it. it oh, this is our animation layer. Right, I never knew that. This is the, the name of our animation layer, and this is the name of our layer itself. Okay, cool. I never knew that. All right. So, so that's we've got our layer set up. And what we're going to do is create a material as well. And let's call this ink. So where was I? Yeah, so the point I'm getting at is we need to create a, a radius that is consistent throughout the whole animation. I think it's important. So for this layer, we're not going to use our vertex color. We're going to just keep this solid ink so we click on material. Um, so let's just start inking him in. So I was saying something before. That's too small, isn't it? Let's increase this radius. But what I'm thinking as well, let's say 12. If this works, like with this, even that doesn't, that's too small. I would suggest that if you're creating something and you go into production, that you make a note of your radius. I know it sounds a bit tedious, but you make a, a note of whatever radius you use for your drawing and you try and keep, keep that radius so you get that consistency so it looks like 33 good number um, is, is what we're going to be using for this one as I say I'm going to use the outline for for real um, right by the way you should know this already but you know if you if you press E, you can just carry on with the line. So what I might do is uh, I might have him blinking, depending on how we get on with time wise. I'm really letting the team down today. I'm not even organized at all. I just literally fell out of bed. Didn't even I haven't even looked at any reference for this. I'm not looked at my reference drawing. I just said, right, I'm gonna do this. Should really have my reference out as well. I, the pencil should be enough to be getting on with. I 
I don't know if you guys have checked out uh, the animated series Primal. If you if you have, and I would strongly suggest you check it out. It's one of the best uh, animated series is out there at the moment, in my uh, humble opinion. It's done by the guy who um, who created Samurai Jack. Now, don't let that put you off because you go, oh, Samurai Jack, some kids, some kids rubbish. Um, I actually did like Camp Samurai Jack, but it was all right ish. But this is on a different level. It's proper dark. Um, the no mercy is shown to the characters. It's kind of real. It's kind of I don't know, not real, but how do you put it? It's like it's like brutality. It's brutal, but it's some you know lovely touching moments in it. But it also, in my view, shows you the how do you put it? The fragility of human life in some ways and it you know it's 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 like storytelling about the softer edges you know it's 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 how what life is like is brutal you know i can imagine you know life is even though we kind of pretend everything is we're kind of pampered especially those in the western uh, civilizations kind of pampered you've got safety nets which is good which is, which is good I'd rather it be in this way than any other but back in the day it was brutal it was brutal and um, I'm assuming if you were Living in the Stone Age times, things were pretty rough. You know what I mean? You had to watch your back. You had to sleep with one eye open. You know what I mean? It's not a good look, really. So, the storytelling in, in this uh, Primal is, is brilliant. Even though it's fantasy-based, it's absolutely... I just so much. I just so rate it. So rate it. He's, he's inspired me. I mean, I was going to do this animated short before, but when I saw that, it made me kind of say to myself, I have to up my game as well. Uh, excuse the strange noise, that's me zipping on my, my coffee. I'm not sure what your. I was something I was going to say earlier on. Well, I've kind of forgotten, as I do. It's getting old. Um, uh, yeah, I was. Oh, yeah, that was it. When I was a young lad, I thought I knew it all, especially when it came to art. So, you kind of. Um, I remember I was working for this studio a long time ago and uh, this was back in the day and they they were training people how to use uh, uh, silicon graphic workstations and I think it was Alias which is now merged into Maya it's called Maya now but it used to before it called Maya it used to be called Alias Wavefront well it was called Wavefront first and then Autodex pur purchased a Wavefront then they uh, basically discontinued it and turned it turned it called it alias, and then then they called and then they called it alias wavefront, and then they called it Maya. So that's what it's called now. But anyway, the point I'm getting at, I was I was working for this firm, and they had a trainer, uh, alias guy, come in, and he was teaching all of the young artists at the studio um, how to use this program, and he was showing us the basic stuff. But being a young cocky artist, I wasn't that bad, especially at modelling. I was a pretty good model at the time. A bit ropey now, but I used to be pretty good. Um, 
and he was showing us how to model and stuff, but he's just like, ah, I don't need to learn from you. I can, uh, I can work it out all myself, you know what I mean? Just put me in front of the machine and I'll learn it all. And when he's showing you the basics, I was kind of turning off. Because I didn't want to do the bursts. I just want to get in there and start doing really cool stuff. But the thing you have to learn is you got to take baby steps, man. You know what I mean? You, generally, you got to... I know it's, I'm not just trying to be showing off here, but you take baby steps and humble yourself. Be aware that you've got to... You've got to take your time. That you're not going to be great overnight. And, and be prepared to learn. No matter how good you get, you know, take it easy. Take it, take the baby steps, you know, the A, B, C. And eventually, you your work will improve. And it'll improve quicker than you acting like you don't need to know anything. So my suggestion is humble yourself. Learn. Don't be shy of learning. Another point that someone mentioned the other day, I was watching a, a guy called Curtis Holt, he, his YouTube channel, and he, he had some. He made some very valid points as well. No, it wasn't Curtis Holt actually. He did make some valid points. Curtis Holt did make some valid points on his channel about about a completely different topic, but um. So I can't remember the guy who whose tutorial it was I was watching, but basically he was talking about don't get caught in the tutorial hole. Now, obviously you, you're watching this tutorial, and I, I'm glad you are watching it. But I think watch a tutorial here and there, learn, do the tutorials, not just here and there, learn them when you need to, you know. But I think it's imperative as a young artist to also have your own projects going on to create a little project you know and again and this talks about being humble but with your projects don't be too ambitious you know I remember when I again when I was younger I was like oh yeah I'm going to make an animated movie this is when uh, 3D animation was like very new and I was like yeah I'm going to be the first person to make an animated movie um, 3D animated movie even though you, know, you have those delusions of grandeur especially when you're younger it's important that you you kick those um, ridiculous ideas to the side humble yourself and say to yourself right let me just learn the basics first Keep know your limitations know what you're capable of and also, I think it's important to um, to try and pick projects that you can finish. Start things and finish things. You know, you could if you just do little animation clips, little clips of animations. Little, so you say, right, I'm gonna just do, I don't know, this guy walking, running, jumping. And then maybe like a, 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 a 30 second clip with a little story or whatever. That's more realistic than saying, I'm going to make the next big movie, animated movie. And you, you've still got your, your, your nappies on. You've still got your diapers on. You haven't, you ain't, you ain't cut your, your, your teeth on animation and you're talking about an animated movie. That's exactly what I was, you know what I mean? Okay, I was working for a studio at the time, but... I want of a skill level where I could create an animated movie. There's no way. But you kind of think, oh, yeah, you, no, no, hell no. Take it easy. And even if you say, right, I want to make an animated YouTube series, nothing wrong with it. But I would say before you even you embark down that road, is you still get your skill level up. You know, you get your skill level up. Get, get, get good, get good. Learn the craft before you you embark on an ambitious project because what could happen as well 
is you start it and you never end up finishing and you get frustrated and then you 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 end up doing nothing where if you just take your time and then you know what you can achieve and what you can't you know your limitations you you feel better i think it's it's the way forward so that's what i would say on that topic curb your enthusiasm humble yourself humble yourself you know what i mean don't think you know it all you young you young guns learn from an old geezer you know what i mean um all right it's coming on it's coming on so what we're going to do is we, we link the rest of them um I'll, I'll carry on doing this and I'll try and entertain you with with some ridiculous stories or whatever. What else has been going on? And what else of... What other knowledge can I impart? <laughs> uh, trust me, don't, don't be listening to me too much. Um, ah, there's something we can talk about. I know it's a bit of a... This is going to be a... A controversial topic. Right. I don't know if I should go there. If I should really do it. But what the hell. Let's just go there. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about. Alright. Air what? There's some people who say. Oh as an artist. You can. Uh, your, you, 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 your art is going to improve if you take drugs. Yeah, I said drugs. Right. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say to those people who think that your art is going to improve if you're somehow on drugs. Smoking the weed. Taking that, that Charlie. I'm going to say no. You, you need your mind to be clear and you need to be on point. I was going to swear then. But I, want, I don't want this, this to be demonetized. I want, you need to be on point. It's imperative. Um, I remember I was, uh, again, when I was younger, a lot of the other artists around me, they were all smoking weed. I used to smoke weed when I was a kid, when I was younger. I did used to smoke, and then I stopped a very long time ago. And um, and I stopped a long time ago, and then when I started working in, I work, I worked for in the computer industry, and a lot of the other artists were were um, were all smoking, and then I thought, oh yeah, all these other artists are smoking, maybe I could smoke as well again. So I started smoking with them. And there's me sitting in front of the computer screen. Silicon graphic workstation cost about 20 grand and I'm at high out of my head and I couldn't could I put a drawing could I put a, a 3d model together could I hell and then I said right you know this this is not working this smoking and and doing art don't get me wrong there are some people who probably can um, smoke and do art uh, but I'm not one of them and I, I still feel I still feel that even if you can do it, I think you'd work better without it, without without um, embarking on that road, taking drugs, and and doing art. You know, they some people go, oh yeah, you, you if you have a spliff, you, you 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 know you're more in touch with your spirit and you can be more creative. No, you're just gonna be a a zombie. You just be zombied out. You know what I mean? You need to, you need to me. Art is similar to martial arts. I do a bit of martial arts. I do um. I do uh, tai chi. And I do mixed martial arts. And I do um. I do bolster fighting. I fight with a bolster. So. And with martial arts, it's. It's everything's about discipline. And I feel art 
in is the same kind of thing. You need to be in your mind needs to be clear. You need to be disciplined, focused, and you're gonna get the best out of it. You gotta take the take it seriously. You know, if you if you wanna if you wanna um, make this your career, take it seriously. It's not a joke. Do you know what I mean? You you need to be very focused and be like, you know, in some ways Spartan in your dedication. You know, wake up, you train. Because no matter how good you get, you, it's always good to train. You can always get better. So you don't just go, oh, I've arrived. So say you're working at a really good company or whatever and they're paying great money. You don't just then rest on your laurels and say, I'm the best now. I don't need to learn anything else. I'm working for, I don't know, Beth Suda or, or whoever, whatever games company or whatever it is you, you employ that, you know, highbrow. I don't need to learn anymore. I know it all now. No, you still learn. You still can improve and get better. So take your, take your, your art seriously. Your training, be like a, you know, I'm going to sound really cheesy, but be like a samurai in, in, in your respects. Take it, be, be, be very serious and focused on your artistic journey. That's what, what I will say on that one. Uh, it's coming on now, this. See, normally, I would, you couldn't do embellishes with, you know, thicker lines, etc. But as I said to you before, we're trying to get this, to, we, we we're trying to, and and forgive me, but let's be totally honest, with this, with this, even with this tutorial, where I'm using this tutorial, this tutorial to increase my skills as well. So that when I do finally uh, create this um, animated short, things are production ready. So these line weights weights are good because what I normally do, I would underneath I would make a thicker weight and etc. But I can't do that with this with this project because we need to make it. Um, production ready I don't know if I said to you ready to and I hope I have because this is if you're new to inking you need to, to ink if you want to and you're using this curve tool press the E key and you can append your your ink brush uh. feel a little bit more awake now than I did earlier on. However, I'm probably still talking rubbish. But forgive me. I am but a mortal man. It's Saturday. You remember, it's Saturday morning as well. See, back in the day, I'd have been out clubbing. But those days are over, mate. Can't be clubbing at my age. Be the oldest geezer in the club, mate. I remember, like, I said to myself a while back, that I'm going to stop going clubbing. So I, I remember I went to a club. And I I guess maybe this is wrong me saying this because um, you're never too old to go out clubbing and that. You know, you, you're as young as the, I was going to say, the girl that you feel. Oh, that sounds so slightly sexist, forgive me. But... Um, what I'm trying to say is I remember going to a club and I saw this old guy and he was he was well old I, I, I don't get me wrong I, I, I'm still saying I look handsome and, I, and I'm not going to reveal my age but I think I could, I've still got it but to me do you hang up your gloves 
before it all goes south or or do you still pretend you're this young kid? The point I'm trying to get at is I was at this club and there was this old geezer. He was like old, you could tell he was the oldest geezer in the place. And he's like there. And I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. You know what I mean? The oldest guy in the club. And no, nah, I just said, no, nah, that's not going to be me. I refuse to be ever become that guy. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, Bow out, bow out of the clubbing scene before I get to that point. So I, I stopped. I saw a while ago. I stopped clubbing. Don't get me wrong. I will go on a special occasion, like a birthday or you know, mate's birthday or something like that. Um, not that I've got any mates. Now I've got, I've got, I've got really one really, really, really good friend. Um, he's online <laughs> no, I'm only joking I've, got, I've actually got a, a friend but a really really good one um, I've got a few I've got I say you know when you say oh I've got lots of friends and that nah you don't you have lots of acquaintances but if, when you say you've got uh, you'll have lots of acquaintances but then you'd have probably if you're very lucky you'd have a handful of really good friends something to remember You'll have lots of acquaintances, people who, you, you know what I mean? But they're not really your friends. You, you know who your friends are. And you're going to have very few of them. You know what I mean? You, ain't gonna have, you might have hundreds of thousands of followers and all that rubbish and lots of Facebook people. They're not your friends. They're just people online. But you'll have one or two, a handful, if you're very blessed, a handful of friends that you can fit on one hand. And they'll be your good friends. Right. As per usual, I've gone off on a tangent. But you should be used to it by now. Um... We've inked this. I'm going to clean it up a bit, do a little bit, and get that reference out, have a look at it, clean it up a bit. But that gives you a rough idea of what we're doing. And then I'm going to ink all the rest of the character. And then we're going to get back and we're going to look at blocking in the colour, the character. All right, so we're going to fast forward now. Okay, um, right, I'm back. Uh, I've not done the other frames yet because I wanted to show you something because um, okay I've, I've basically outlined him tightened it up a little bit but underneath his jawline I want to create a shadow so what I want to do now is we're going to create a layer, a layer under the ink layer here so let's create a new layer and let's call it ink um, shadow And also, we're going to create a new material for this ink shadow as well. And let's call this, uh, let's add a new one. Call this ink shadow. And we don't have to do this. You could possibly do it with a vertex sh shadow, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it like this. And so we've got ink, we've got ink shadow. Now what we're going to do is underneath his jawline, we're going to create a a little bit of a shadow underneath it. So make sure we're in draw mode. Um, make sure the material is on the fill. And then we're going to just draw that, that shadow underneath. Use the curve brush for this, I suppose. Don't have to. And uh, for some reason, it's not filled. I'll deal with that in a bit. A minute. The reason it hasn't filled is because I've not dragged it across. Bit of gap there. I'll just fill that in with our pencil. There we go. Right. So 
We've got a shadow underneath here. Maybe if we thicken this out a bit slightly here. If we just, uh, just thicken this out a bit here. That's, that's nice. So what we're going to do now, so I've done this one frame. Now, if you notice with the animation, and I will be, I, there's a, obviously, I'm going to um, put this on my Gumroad rep repository so you can download it and have a look at it yourself. Is his head really doesn't change uh, in animation. There's no volume, no blinking, etc. It's just his head just moves up and down in slight rotation. So there's no point us drawing every single one of these inked frames again and again. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy just his head and then paste it on each and every single uh, frame. Save to save time. Especially with 2D animation, we're always looking for shortcuts to, 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 to make our life a little bit easier. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our, our T-Rex ink layer. Now if you notice here, we've got these on, it's on 16. Your might be on eight already, but this is on 16. Now if you remember in the early tutorial, I uh, showed you how to shrink your frames down and bring them back up to two, shooting on twos and shooting on ones. So basically we want to, to manage our frames, especially when regarding inking, we want to manage it, bring it down to, uh, as if we're shooting on ones. So, we bring the header to, to one make sure that your layers are all unlocked and make sure your animation layer is animation layer on animation layer I'm not sure why it jumped forward but it shouldn't really matter make sure animation layers on animation layer might be just a bug I'm not sure but anyway let's just see how we get on and what we're going to do is bring our header to frame one and say make sure everything is unlocked not locked unlocked bring it bring your cursor down over to your first frame press s and then 0 0.5 hit return and now we've shrunk our frames again so now we've only we're only dealing with eight frames. So now that's done. Let's just lock all of that. Let's keep it unlocked. And then we're gonna go back up to our ink layer. Make sure our ink is click on ink. Bring it back down to, to one. So I'm not sure why it just flipped and moved. I'm thinking it's a bug. It's, it's not a problem and then now we're on one so see what we did here as well we've got ink shadow and ink what I want to do now I'm going to bring this ink up click on that ink and bring it up and this is something I've not shown you before but we're going to merge that ink shadow with ink that layer, you know like in Photoshop, you can merge layers, if you're aware of doing that in Photoshop, we could do the same in uh, Grease Pencil, so to avoid confusion, let's merge that layer together, because we don't really need two, two layers here. So, click on this icon here, and then go merge down, and now it's called Ink Shadow, let's just call it Ink. And, and also, you should be saving as you go along. Let's just save that. So, 
we've got that done. So what we're gonna do now, as I said here, is we're gonna copy that head for those eight frames. So it corresponds with that head in eight frames. So the way we can go about doing that is if we go, um, so you see I highlighted it already, but I'll do it highlight again. Make sure you got this select most sexual stroke points and select just his head. Just to do, just that bit there. Doesn't matter if we go over, we can always delete it, any excess lines. And then what I want you to do is right click and hit, not duplicate, copy, hit copy. Obviously you can use the hotkeys, but um, for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna just use mainly the manuals. So just hit copy. I don't want you to hit duplicate, copy, copy it. And then we're gonna scroll to frame two, and then we're gonna paste it. And then we're gonna do that again with frame three, paste it. And frame four, paste it. You guessed it, five. We'll do this right up to frame eight. And then what we're gonna do then is position the, the, the frames. Now, if you remember before in, in tutorial number one, the way I did that is I used the, using the 3D cursor to position stuff as well. Um, we'll just do, we'll do one frame so that you can, you, you know, just in case you've forgotten. Um, so let's just uh, move it. Frame one. Sorry, it's on frame eight. Let's go to frame one. Frame one's okay. Frame two. If you notice, the head goes down slightly, so we want to bring it down slightly. Frame three goes down again. We're going with things a bit tedious. 2D animation is a bit more tedious. There's a reason why 3D animation uh, in production is people, uh, uh, industry, uh, the industry is gravitated because it is in some ways easier, in some ways easier. But if you notice as well, with a lot of 2D animation, they say, oh, it's easier and whatever. And it is in some ways, in some ways it isn't. But if you notice with the movies, the big, the big movies, they still take as long as if you were gonna um, do it by hand, 2D, because there's a lot of work that goes into it. All right, I think, it needs to go up a bit more. I think he's rising up now, yeah, there we go. So on frame one, two, three, four. On frame four, his his head rotates a bit. So what we want to do is we're going to move the three D cursor over here. If for some reason your three D cursor is not showing, you can um, make sure it's active by clicking here. You go onto this over. You see this? This is your overlay icon. Shot overlays. And your 3D cursor might be not activated. You can activate it by clicking on there. And it, my um, bar is at the bottom. Now, the reason why it's at the bottom is I moved it, but you can move it. Your one might be at the top. And how you move it is you right click and then flip to top. And you can do it flip to bottom. I just find it easier for, at the bottom so you can flip that. So. So what I want you to do is make sure that this icon 3D cursor is activated, yeah? 3D icon, and then when we rotate this edited object, it's gonna rotate around this 3D cursor point. So if we rotate it now, so that it corresponds with the animation. There's a slight, there's a slight rotation in it. And again, he rotates here slightly again as well. Just only slightly. Just bring that up a bit. And seven. Let's 
bring them down. And eight, it goes down. So we've done that. I save it so we don't mess up. It's a little bit, bit, bit fiddly there. But the reason why I did that, and so now we don't have to ink every one of his his head again because it's basically the same, the same movement. So now we can ink the rest of the character. Well, I'm going to ink the rest of the character, and then. Um, You'll see the finished article now. Yeah, so I'll do that and then we're going to fast forward ahead. Okay, so basically I've I've inked it now, inked every single frame. Let's have a look at it. So if we uh, get rid of that. So if you look at it, it's, it's inked. It looks okay. It's just, pretty, no, I'm pretty pleased to be quite honest. I'm, I'm relatively happy with it. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. Obviously, I still got to do a bit of clean up with it, but so far it's, it's okay. So all I did as well with this is just remember to you to scale up because obviously I scaled it up from the eight frames to two, showing you that procedure. The other thing I just wanted to point out as well, what I did is because the arms are kind of similar on every frame, instead of drawing them again, I did the same procedure which I did with the head. And just copied and pasted to selected it and just copy and pasted it to every frame so so that's it basically um i was going to do the blocking in color um but we'll leave that for episode four and we'll do the blocking in color um for that so i'm quite happy with that as i say what i'm going to do is i'm going to post this um this file on my repository site so you can download it now I did encounter a problem, and I don't know if it's me doing something wrong, or maybe uh, another one of you, or if it's a bug in uh, the beta version of, of Grease Pencil. Maybe we are do using, and some of you maybe still be using the alpha version, but it might be a bug in the, in the beta version. Is I did not, or it could be something that I completely I did wrong myself. Is I did notice that when I switch switch, switch between my ink and my T Rex. Um, it sometimes, it didn't do it this time, but sometimes it, it moves, sometimes it doesn't. And it could be something to do with the layers. The I'm not sure, I, to be, I'm not sure why it happens, but it sometimes moves. So if you have that problem, it might be a bug or it might be something I'm doing wrong. When I go to ink, see it moved there. I'm not sure what, what the issue is there, or if, if there's an issue or uh, and I've done something wrong, I'm not sure. But it doesn't really matter in the in the big scheme of things because for what we're doing, it's not gonna it's not a big issue at all. It's something that we can resolve quite easily. So anyway, I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, so if you're having a problem, that you you don't you don't worry too much about it. So yeah, I reckon uh, I'm quite quite happy with that. Um, Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Um, so, as I say, for the next the next tutorial, episode four, we'll do the the stripe and the blocking in the colours, and then we'll take it from there. All right, guys. Um, Later.